There it is. It's like nothing ever happened. Yeah, there we go. First try. First try. Hey, everybody. It's Wolf Den Podcast time. Yes, the number one podcast on Twitch for video games uh, that never, uh, nothing ever goes wrong. Nothing's ever, ever been ever. wrong here ever. Uh, ever. Hello. Hey. We, we, uh, we, we, we got so much to talk about today. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy how much we got to talk about today. There's a lot going on today with uh, everything. everything. Everything's got so much going oh, on. Oh, yeah. You know, it's uh, it, it was PAX. Oh, PAX, PAX West. West. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I wish I, I went because Nintendo had so much cool stuff. Well, I think the Nintendo Live event was also this past weekend. Yeah. Because Doug, there, there's an interview with Doug Bowser. Uh, not friend of the show because he wouldn't take a picture with me at E3. Um, <laughs> but he chumped you. He did. He did talk about things like what, the state of the Switch, uh, what's coming next, and uh, Charles Martinet's current role as ambassador. Spoiler alert: He gives the most BS answers in the in the universe. Yeah, I could imagine. That's yeah. that's very CEO of him. But like, he's really good at it. <laughs> so, uh, but that's not the main topic. We want to talk about. I, I specifically wanted to talk about. Uh, PlayStation Plus Premium because mm-hmm. they have a price hike, but I wanted to also wrap in the Game Pass stuff because right. of Starfield. Yes, and we switched cameras again for no goddamn reason. <laughs> we had a lot of technical problems, and uh, for whatever reason, uh, we're still our, having technical. Our problems. mics are messed up, and that means that we're only gonna have one camera today. Yeah. <laughs> That's all you need to know. Don't worry about it. Uh, anyway, um. I want to talk about the Starfield stuff because I want to talk about Game Pass because of the Starfield stuff. Right. You seem to be confused about uh, the release of Starfield. Yes. I was too. Mm -hmm. And I'm now mad about it. Well, I feel like you have a right to be mad about it. Oh, yeah. Um, A lot of people on the internet don't think I do. Well, of course not. (laughs) Uh, Um, But we will, I feel like we'll get into that when we get into the main topic. Yeah. Why Uh, don't we talk about the PlayStation Plus games? Yeah, because that will well that will dovetail into the main topic. Sure. So, ladies and gentlemen watching, if you don't know, it's the first it's the first of the month. Well, it's the beginning of the month, and usually the good lords over at Sony grace us with free games if you're subscribed to any tier of PlayStation Plus. Xbox doesn't do that anymore with uh, Xbox Live, no, but no, no. their new version of that, uh, Game Pass Core, hasn't launched yet. So we're not going to talk about those games. We're going to talk about the September games for PlayStation Plus, starting with. Uh, the Saints Row reboot on PS4 and PS5. Uh, Black Desert Traveler Edition on PS4. And Generation Zero on PS4. The only thing I know about Black Desert is that it's an MMO and that it has a really cool character creator. Okay. That's all That's I know. more than I know about it. Saints Row? Interesting that we're getting that. Yeah. Because the studio shut down. Yeah. And we'll have more on that later. Uh, I know this was like the big reboot of Saints Row under the new owners of Volition, uh, taking it in a new direction, still uh, open world GTA knockoff, but like a kookier version of it, like a comedy version of it. And if I remember correctly, it didn't land the way Volition wanted it to. I don't think people were as receptive to this new style of Saints Row as they were the previous style. Okay, interesting. Yeah. But I mean, who knows? Maybe they... Uh, maybe it's a hidden gem, so it's included in your subscription. You should pick it up and play it. Generation Zero, the first person open world adventure, is set in a familiar but hostile open world of 1980s Sweden. <laughs> oh, I remember this game. Okay, this they ripped off a famous artist for the uh, concept art. Oh, did they? Yeah, I was like, oh, that looks awesome. I love that artist. And then that artist was like, I didn't work on this. <laughs> they clearly ripped me off, and then yeah. showed like examples of them ripping them off. At least I'm pretty sure that's what right. It is. Uh, yep, yep, that's exactly what this is. Right. So these are the games that are available uh, starting today, all month of September. Um, however, oh, and this goes into the main topic. Okay. So on the PlayStation blog, they announced all these games, and then very sneakily, at the bottom of the article, they they announced the following. We would also we also wanted to let you know. That starting September 6th, that's tomorrow as of the time of this recording, uh, we will be increasing the price for PlayStation Plus 12-month subscriptions globally across all benefits. This price adjustment 
uh, will enable us to continue bringing high quality games and value added benefits to your PlayStation Plus subscription service. Here are the new prices for PlayStation Plus 12 month subscription plans. Are you ready? I'm ready. PlayStation Plus Essential, that's the bottom tier, mm -hmm. 80 US dollars a year. PlayStation Plus Extra, 135 US dollars a year. PlayStation Plus Premium, $160 per do, year do US. We, do we remember what they were previously? Uh, if you go to the Polygon article, they actually okay. have a, a breakdown of that. Okay, good, because yeah. I would like to know that. Yes. So, uh, for those of you who not on the Wolf Den podcast or not who can't see the screen, uh, PlayStation Plus Essential used to be sixty dollars. It is now eighty. That's a lot. That's a <laughs> that's a lot. That's a twenty dollar increase. PlayStation Plus Extra used to be a hundred dollars. It's now a hundred and thirty five. And the big one, PlayStation Plus Premium, used to be $120. It is now $160. I'm, I need to cancel this immediately. That is a $40 <laughs> increase. I need to cancel this immediately because I'm not getting any benefit from this. This, I'm only subscribed to Essential. Mm -hmm. And this, I think I'm going to cancel my plan when it's time to renew. I dived in the uh, like recently on my RG Ally to play like some, yeah. some streaming games and stuff. But... I c could just do that on the plus extra. Okay, so break it down for me. Essential is just you're playing games online well, with your friends. On. Let me, uh, actually, no, it also includes cloud gaming. because uh, Not cloud gaming, uh, cloud saves. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Which but, is dumb, because yeah. doesn't Xbox just give you that for that free? It gives you that for free, yeah. And so does Steam. <laughs> <laughs> let me just, um, let me find the... I am logging into playstation right now because i kept talking about how i want to cancel my premium subscription because i right. got that to try it out and i did use it recently to play it on my rog ally just to try it out but mm. i don't think i need the whole thing but and, and my my i i never turn on my playstation mm -hmm. or my uh uh what's that other thing the switch Ooh, I have switch, switch boy. I haven't used the switch in so long. I used it yesterday for a video, mm -hmm. and I realized I have not. I had Pokemon open. On it. <laughs> That's how long it's been. All right, so here's what you get: essential, the bottom tier. What I have, mm -hmm. you get the monthly games, the free games. You get multiplayer. You get uh, exclusive discounts, exclusive content, whatever that means. Uh, cloud storage, share play, and game help on PlayStation 5. Help! Help! <laughs> okay. Uh, f extra. You get all of that plus the game catalog of PS4 games and PS select PS5 games and uh, access to Ubisoft Plus class Classics. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yes. Oh, wait, Ubisoft Plus, that's different than what, than the deal that Ubisoft is going to have. With, no, that's just classics. That's yeah. classic games. Okay, it's not, it doesn't mean you're going to get Call of Duty. Correct. All right. I would like to say that my subscription, I already canceled it and it ends in February. Okay. Uh, premium gets all of that, plus the classics catalog, meaning... PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3 games. Uh, you also get game trials. We can d basically demo any game That's for cool. a certain amount of time. That's cool. And cloud streaming. So like what they're equivalent to like what Game Pass oh, so is going to be. Oh, so I can't get that with extra. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. So, so that's bad. Yeah. Uh, this price hike happened already? It happened. It's gonna happen tomorrow. Oh, so fucking! If you've been considering getting any of these, get them right, right now. this second. If you're listening to this on YouTube, it is too late. Yes. Uh, if you're here on Twitch, get this shit right now if you want it. Yeah. Otherwise, I'd say probably not worth it. No, I I would definitely say not worth it. I think unless you're playing multiplayer every day. And keep in mind, a lot of multiplayer games that most people are playing don't are free. It. Yeah, <laughs> you don't need the yeah. the subscription to play them. Like I'm looking at what's included in the essentials. 
the monthly games sure it's nice but realistically i claim all of them i think i play like maybe one or two of them so like i can live without it um multiplayer i know i haven't played a multiplayer game in like three years so not really something you know you want to know why one of the reasons why i keep subscribing to xbox live and uh playstation plus for multiplayer oh even why? though like i don't play multiplayer games on the 360, we had it was one of the Need for Speed games. I think it was Hot Pursuit had a really cool uh, feature, the auto log, where it would tell you what your friends were doing in the game at any point in time. Like it would, like it would give you real time updates of how they were doing, mm -hmm. or if they were currently playing a game, you can just enter their game as a cop and like try to arrest them. It was a really cool feature. I let my subscription lapse one year. And it just disappeared. So that it became like a completely different game, like a less full game. Mm -hmm. And that kind of scared me into continuing to play, pay for multiplayer, even on games where I didn't want to play with anybody. I, so I, I mean, don't think that's a thing anymore. But Yeah, I mean, and how many people do you know that are going to be actively using their Xbox? Exactly. Stuff, you know, so. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't really the, the discounts can be nice, but like, I don't think they really happen all that much. To like to warrant paying eighty dollars a year to save two dollars on a old game, uh, really like even cloud storage. Like I don't use it that much. You know, there's other ways. Like I can back up the saves to a thumb drive if I really needed to. I mean, to. I used it. You took my PlayStation 4 right, and, and I, I was using it for that. But it was took my PlayStation Four, and I didn't have to back up anything. I just had everything yeah. already, which was very useful. Right, but like I took your PlayStation Four because I was ping ponging between a PS Four in the basement and a PS Four upstairs, and it wasn't even that convenient because I still had to download yeah. the old save and then re-upload it to make sure you know it all sunk. It wasn't automatic. I think that PlayStation subscription is worse. Yeah, all things considered. Mm -hmm. uh, however. I think that Xboxes is still more money. I think it is. So I'm breaking it down now. Mm -hmm. uh, there are three tiers. There's the con. It's. I'm just looking at Game Pass. There's nothing else, right? Are we done with uh, with gold? Yes. They called it something else. They call it Game Pass Core now. Okay. Which I don't think is on that chart. It's not on this yeah. chart. So what is Game Pass Core? Game, Game Pass, Pass Core, Core is literally just what Xbox Live Gold was. In, in, and they give you a couple of cool games. Yes. Instead of two games every month, they give you just 25 games okay. outright. So that is $10 a month. Yeah. It's the same as PC Game Pass. Right. That would be $120 a year. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they give you a bundle deal, but everything's written as months. Yeah. So hey, to, compare, to compare it to uh, PlayStation, I have to... According to PlayStation, these new prices mm -hmm. is like, if it's for the year... And according to them, it's still cheaper than buying it once, uh, once a month, every month. So they do give you a deal. Yes. Well, okay. So, so Xbox charges you month to month. You can't buy them all together. Correct. So, take that. What you? I don't know. If that affects you at all. A one month subscription to premium is to PlayStation Plus Premium is eighteen dollars. Oh, for just yeah. one month. For of just premium. one month. Okay. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. Because Ultimate, the full-on Game Pass with everything, PC and console and everything, is yeah. $17 a yeah. month. Uh, okay, but but all together, that's $204 a year. If you buy a year of PlayStation Plus Premium, it's 160 So that's a significant discount. Yeah. So that is a better deal. And I got to say, I like to shit on PlayStation a lot, but uh, they do have a lot of great games on their PlayStation Plus Premium. They do, yeah. yeah. It's like most of like the high quality PS4 games that yeah. you want to play. Yeah. Uh. Anyway, besides that, the core is a hundred and twenty dollars a year. Yeah. Uh. The console and oh, the the core and the PC is one hundred twenty dollars a year. Console is a hundred and thirty two dollars uh a uh, a year. Yeah. Which is. About the same as uh, PlayStation Plus Extra. I'm on uh, the announcement page for Game Pass Core, mm -hmm. and they said that will remain $60 a year. And it's officially going to be uh, called Game Pass Core September 14th. 
Oh, so, so it's th- still Xbox Live Gold, but on September 14th, it will officially be Game Pass Core. And you can buy that a year of it? Yes. Okay, so that is d- cheaper mm-hmm. than PlayStation Plus Essentials. Yeah. So this is all very confusing and very weird. Yes. Uh, the baseline plan, cheaper on Xbox. The uh, middle tier, kind of the same on both. Mm-hmm. The highest tier, cheaper on PlayStation still, even though uh, uh, they raise the price. Yes. So, honestly, now that we broke all of that down, this doesn't seem too bad. It's just upsetting that it the price went up so much. I would honestly say it makes Essential worthless. Essential. Yeah. The $80. Yes. Yeah, because, because that's not a lot. That's yeah, you're, $20 more and there's not much you're getting. Yeah. I mean, you're getting online multiplayer, which I think at this point should just like should be free we've grown past the point where you need to pay for online multiplayer i feel because games like you know fortnite and rocket league like a lot of the shown, great stuff yeah, is, that you is don't gonna need be to pay for that um yeah cloud uh cloud saves like i understand the need to like pay for that but i feel like if xbox has shown that you can do it for free so there's got to be a way to like it'll give you some space in the cloud and like maybe if you want to pay a little extra for more space I yeah feel like that's the way to do it i don't want to lose my cloud saves and i do like using cloud gaming every once in a while yeah but i don't want to pay 160 dollars a yeah. year to do it because playstation's cloud streaming is so much worse than mm-hmm. xbox yeah now i'm saying all of this but i am getting a project q or whatever the hell it's called <laughs> uh, a portal. playstation portal yeah in november mm-hmm. i think so i will need this yeah i mean i have my subscription until uh february yeah but uh i'm gonna need this in order to and then maybe i'll change my mind maybe i'll 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 like i'll like it more hopefully it'll be better by then when they have a dedicated uh product for it but otherwise game pass so much better and i I, even though it's more money i'd still rather spend the more money on 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 that yeah however however (laughs) I've been burned by Game Pass. Yes. Are we ready to move on? Uh, we are ready to move on. Okay, we're going to skip all the Nintendo stuff, and we're yeah. going to go right to the Starfield stuff. I'm going to move it up in, in the in the document. Okay. I was burned by Game Pass. I'm actually going to uh, pull up my tweet, or my X. No, there's still tweets. Don't, don't tweets. Don't, don't call them tweets. Don't reward bad behavior. You're right. Uh, so, first of all, Last week, we already talked about how they got rid of the dollar game. Yes, the trial, yeah. Yeah, so there's also that. Uh, But I was so excited to try Starfield out. Okay, yeah, yeah. Last week when it was launching. Yeah. And everybody was talking about how the game is launching and they're so excited to play the game. Um, So, turns out, like, I'm playing it on Game Pass because I have right. Game Pass. Obviously, I pay, yes. now I know I pay $200 mm-hmm. a year to have Game Pass because Game Pass is such a good deal. You got great cloud streaming. You get yeah. all of the day one first party releases. Yes. With your $200 subscription. Yes. That includes studios owned by Microsoft, including Bethesda. Day one releases with a yes. picture of Starfield right there. And Pinocchio from Lies of P. Yeah, is that out yet? Uh, no, that'll be a, that's coming out this month though, and that'll be a Game Pass Day One. I want to try that. So you can play your sexy Pinocchio anime game. So when <laughs> the sexy Pinocchio anime Souls like game. So when Starfield dropped last week, and everybody was so excited to play it, that was early access. Yeah, that was not real Day One apparently. No. <laughs> so in order to get the early access, mm-hmm. you had to do Wolfden Podcast's favorite activity. <laughs> Which is pay more money. Yes. Get the premium edition or the constellation edition. Ooh. Which I think is a physical that you won't get or you'll get it like the day after. Like, yeah. it, like that's not helpful. Do you want me to read the inverse article? Uh yeah, sure, but hold on. Okay. Hold on a second. Okay. Okay. Early access quotes for Starfield commences September first. Yes, which happened already. Yes, it actually commenced August thirty first at <laughs> eight p.m. Eastern time. Okay, very confusing. Yes, uh, the full game launches September sixth, which is just tomorrow. Yes, or right now. And I think it happened at eight p.m. already. Okay. I, I'm charging my ally right now to to check. Got it. Uh, when the game early accessed 
all the servers were fucked and nobody could yeah. get the game for like a good 20, 30 minutes. Um, so in order, so you could play it if you had Game Pass. Right. You could play it. Mm-hmm. You just needed to pay $31.50 <laughs> to upgrade to the your premium. Game Pass to the premium edition. Now, the premium edition mm-hmm. sounds enticing because yeah. what you get with the premium edition is you get some cool cosmetic items for your ship. Uh-huh. And you get the DLC when it comes out. Okay. Now I'm not you you are fucked up if you think <laughs> that I'm playing far enough into this game to then want to play the yes. DLC. That's I think, just not gonna I happen. think it's messed up that you're you know, you're holding ac- early access to your game hostage uh with DLC for a game that nobody's played and nobody knows if they're gonna want to play the yeah. DLC. Yes. So, in order to play this game when everybody else is playing... First of all, everyone who's playing this game was spending $100. Right. Or $30 upgrade, Mm -hmm. which is, you know, whatever. Uh, If I cared that much about this game knowing I'm going to get the DLC, that's not that bad of a deal. Mm -hmm. But the fact that you're locking the early access behind all of that is fucked up. Yeah. Um, And then I got flamed because everybody's... I, I, I said Starfield releasing early for everyone except Game Pass subscribers really ruins that day one selling point. And everyone's yeah. like, it's not day one, it's early. It's like, right. why, who sa- says who? Says them. They're saying it's early, so what, yeah. you're just going to believe them? Yeah, it's that makes it such an arbitrary thing, you know, day one versus early. Tech, the early access is day one if you think about it, because that's the first time people yeah. are able to play it. That's the release. There if, is one it, release. <laughs> there, yeah. there can only be one release. If it, if 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 you <laughs> wanted to say early access, then what you do is you have like then you release it even earlier and then stop the play time of it and then don't release it again until the actual release date. That's early access. That's I've seen that before. Yeah, yeah. that's that's, that's true. Based, that's but but that, that that's the game without some features right you know that's like this that's is early your beta, beta testing yeah. yes exactly and that's fine in yeah. its own little way but in this case do you think bethesda is like oh we got to get the game ready for the launch yeah that's september 6th no they're like we got to get the game ready for when everyone's gonna play it on september 1st yeah the day that it comes out yeah you know so also i was looking they did have a patch that came out August 31st yeah. at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Mm-hmm. I couldn't find any official wording on what the name of that patch was, but right. all of the news sites were calling it the day one patch. <laughs> <laughs> so that's fucking pissing me off. Yeah. Uh, I included the inverse article there, I think. What is that? Is, is that just the problems people have? Uh, Starfield just solved one again. Of- solved one of game Pass's biggest problems okay so that's why i put this here because i was looking for news about how starfield released and people don't like it and it's yeah. like broken in some weird ways um i was trying to find an article wrapping all of that up yeah. then i found this article that likes the fact that it came out early access yeah. and that it was locked behind 31 dollars and 50 cents on 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 game pass yeah all right uh, gamers worldwide have been waiting years to get their hands on Starfield, <clears throat> Starfield, which finally releases on September 6th, but Starfield's premium edition presented a solution for those who couldn't wait. Early access to the game. Oh, so it's saying it's good for people who are fucking impatient. <laughs> Uh, while Game Pass subscribers will be able to play Starfield on release day, Bethesda is offering a premium edition upgrade to give even Game Pass subscribers early access. The cunning uh, plan may just have solved one of uh, may have just solved one of the biggest received problems with the subscription service sales. Oh, oh, that's oh for Xbox for or, or Bethesda for game for games on Game Pass. Okay. I see what they're getting at now. They're okay. saying this is a capitalism's good. Yes. <laughs> the beauty of Game Pass's Netflix of games approach to offering players a wide selection of content is rather is that rather than shelling out full price for every game you want to play, you can just pay a reasonable subscription fee every month. While the benefit was obvious for subscribers, there wasn't a clear indication as to why a developer would want their new games on the service day one. Microsoft even admitted in a report to the UK's Competition and Markets Authority in February that Game Pass decreases. How to kill a bug? Okay, Game Pass decreases 
Microsoft-based game sales of titles on the service. For companies acquired by Microsoft like Bethesda, day one availability on Game Pass seems to be the new normal. The prospect of losing out on sales for any company that, uh, isn't appealing, and Bethesda seems to have found a solution to the problem in Starfield's Premium Edition. The Premium Edition costs $100, $30 more than the base game on Steam, and grants players access to the game five days earlier than everyone else. The promise of early access is clearly convincing enough as Starfield has already reached nearly 250,000 concurrent players before the game's official release. This means all those players purchase the premium edition. Typically, Game Pass subscribers would be left out of this early access period, but Bethesda has found a way to satisfy those players while making even more money. The premium edition upgrade is a DLC available for purchase on Xbox for $35 that grants Game Pass subscribers the ability to download and play Starfield early. The premium edition upgrade is currently the best selling item on the Microsoft store in the U S so, so we get it. Yeah. Um, the, we're, all, we're already seeing people in the chat who don't see eye to eye here. Yeah. Um, almost every business uses FOMO to make more money. Like, at, uh, yeah. you know, like, uh, yeah, people yeah, do this. Obviously. Yeah. I understand, but that doesn't mean it's not fucked up. Like every, all oh, yeah. other people do it. So it's fine. No, yeah, other people do it. And right. it's also yeah. fucked up. We don't like that either. Yeah. It's okay to do crack because other people do crack. Yeah. Don't do it's, crack. It's, it's, it's still fucked up. It's, <laughs> we still don't like it. It's, uh, I mean, I will say it does bring attention the ongoing struggle of sales and profitability for studios in the era of Game, of Game Pass and PlayStation Plus Premium. Because we have seen a lot of stories where, yes, they're bringing attention to these games, but these games are not necessarily becoming profitable or even successful because of it. They're just getting well known. Now, I don't hate the idea of having an upgrade on the Game Pass version. Like, right. if I wanted the DLC, that would be great to yeah. be able to upgrade my Game Pass version with the, just pay a couple bucks and yeah. get all of some bonus content or you get some maybe some cosmetic items that I'm interested in or something. Mm -hmm. That'd be cool. But releasing the game early behind a paywall after you say that you the whole deal with game pass is that you get day one first party releases yeah that's fucked up yeah because i pay 200 dollars a year for game pass so that i can be on the front line so that i can be one of the first people to play your day one first party releases Th that's been a trend that's been going on for a long time you know if you pre-order the game you can get it like a week early or something if you pre-order the premium edition you can get it a week early yeah that, and that also that, that yes that's we have a major problem with we, that we've here. always hated that i feel like this is worse because you're already paying the subscription yeah. for the privilege of playing the game as soon as it comes out yeah i'm not even a fan of bethesda right i'm a fan of game pass right because of the day one first party releases yeah. so i was only gonna play this mm -hmm. because of the game pass functionality and then uh it turned out i couldn't and i had to wait until right this second to to try to download it they clearly advertised the release date though you're again going by what they said, not what they did. They released it last week. They they advertised the release date, not the early access date. That's another yes. good point. They made a big. I mean, they delayed the game a bunch of times, mm -hmm. but they kept. But they like finally said it's coming out September sixth. All the you know the marketing for it was saying September sixth. It wasn't saying uh, September sixth. If you want to play it early, play it. If you want to play it on September first, here's how. Yeah, that's another issue. That the issue again, I will say, is that they say day one first party <laughs> releases on Game Pass if you pay two hundred dollars a year, right. and then I did that, and then they're like, "Here's Starfield next week." Everyone's playing it now, but yeah. you can only play it next week. That's what we're talking about, and they didn't advertise that correctly, and that's fucked up. It's going to come to a point no one can afford games anymore. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you've heard it from me. You don't have to buy games as soon as they come out. If you wait, they're always cheaper and it comes with everything. I, I'm only waiting 
because I hate the idea of early access. Right. Because I, I feel like we didn't make this point clear enough. You can't release a game early. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> yeah. The game comes, the game's done when it's done. When it's done baking in the oven, there's a date when it has to launch. Right. And that date is the date. <sighs> You say when a game is done baking in the oven, it comes out, but we live in a world where games are released clearly not done. Right. And then they just keep getting patched until they But they have done. to be ready for the prime time. Like, the company is like, this is the day the game has to well, be Well, it used to be, it had to be ready at a certain date so that they could send it off to the disc printing factory yeah. to, like, press it onto disc and ship Which it out. Which they still do. They still do. But with digital download, digital distribution, that is becoming less and less important. Yeah. Starfield could have been a game they really they could have released it first digitally and then do the physical release later. You know, we're seeing a lot of games do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're not going to do that with Starfield obviously. It's a big trip But like game. we we've said before like if a game releases in a beta version and then mm -hmm. everybody gets to play it and then they lock it down again and then they release the full release, right? This is the full game. Yes. That they released last week. Mm -hmm. And now uh, today, right now, we're getting the full game again. It's the same game. It's the yeah. exact same everything. So, again, they got the game ready for launch last week. Right. It wasn't day negative five. That's the day the game released. Mm -hmm. That's, again, my fucking problem. I, 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 my analogy was, oh, I have reservations for a restaurant next week. And they just called me now and said, the food's ready. Yeah. If you want to pay $30, you can eat it now. Yeah. Otherwise we'll just, otherwise we'll just heat it up when you get here next yeah. week. And it's like, wait. I know it. It's not fair that you're already, like you said, you're already paying $200, but if you want to play the big new release with the packs for $30. Yeah, which is, well, I'll get, I will show you the pic, guys, at home, I will show you the picture again of where it says, I'm going to play Starfield on day one. I lost it. Okay, well, it's- Just it's, kidding, it's right here. It sets a bad precedent because it can show that they can do this with other games. Mm -hmm. And it also, you know, brings up the question of, that's a Microsoft first party studio. But is like Capcom going to be allowed to do that? Is sure. Square Enix going to be allowed to do that? They can all do that. Is Devolver Digital going to be allowed to do that? Like, is that a privilege that's only allowed for Microsoft? Because people want to make money from Game Pass plays. Oh, yes. Not, yeah, I understand what you're yeah. saying. So is this a privilege that only Microsoft is extending to Starfield? Or are they going to do that with the next Halo? And is the next Resident Evil game going to get that? Uh, is Assassin's Creed going to get that? I'll say again, I don't mind charging extra for the premium content. Right. For in, in Game Pass. Yeah. But if the premium content is playing the game early, that's fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, 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 agree, I agree with you on that front. Mm -hmm. I just I just feel like this opens up a whole can of worms that I don't think anybody is thinking about. For Game Pass specifically, because they're again, they're ruining the day for Game one. Pass, they're ruining the day one selling point of right. Game Pass. For Game Pass specifically, but also to like, you know, this could potentially affect Microsoft's relationship with other publishers. Yeah. If they keep this privilege to themselves or just to Bethesda. Well, even. well, with the other publishers, they need to have a deal already. And the deal's probably going to be something like the day the game right. launches, it has to release on Game Pass. And then the publisher would have to be like, well, what does that mean? Can the game launch early access a week before? Yeah. And then Xbox would be like, no, that's fucked up. <laughs> and then the publisher would be like, well, you did that with Starfield. They'd be like, yeah. well, that was special. Like, I guarantee you, Liza P is not getting this treatment. <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah. But you can't trust it anymore. It's in this picture. Yeah. And we already know that we did not get Starfield at, on day one. Yeah. So this massively pissed me off because again i was waiting to play starfield when it launched and then mm -hmm. i found out everyone was playing it and i couldn't play it because i didn't want to pay 3150 yeah also i hear the game's not great <laughs> i hear a lot of people are disappointed there there is also that yes i i am still gonna play it i'm gonna download it now and i'll probably play it tomorrow i think i actually just downloaded uh armored core oh really i'm gonna play that tonight because i think Ew. i'll actually like that game i've heard good things about armored core um 
but I will play Starfield a little bit probably tomorrow. I hear it takes like 20 hours to like feel like you're doing anything in the game. Okay. And that means I probably won't ever feel like I'm doing anything in the right. game because I, I will very quickly fall off. Um, but my understanding is that people were expecting like Bethesda's version of No Man's Sky. Right. And this ends up being more like Bethesda's version of Mass Effect. Okay. Like you don't actually have the freedom to roam around like you do in no man's sky right but no man's sky the way you like roam around is like different than you would expect okay did you play no man's sky i did not play no man's sky you roam around and you're like oh i get it it's like it's it's procedurally generated there's not much you do they just farm stuff yeah you know like yeah and they, they just make infinite stuff for you to farm you know but it, Bethesda game, it has like a story. You got people you got to walk around and talk to yeah, and stuff. Yeah. And that would be a lot more difficult to maintain when mm-hmm. you have infinite stuff going on, yeah. you know? Uh, so, again, this is kind of just like Skyrim beats Mass Effect. Yeah. Um, so, like, that's kind of interesting. Like, I'm going to go into it w- with the lens of that. And, again, I'm not, like, huge into Bethesda games. I, yeah. I, I kind of liked Skyrim, even though I played it, like, way after it came out. Yeah. Otherwise, I was really not that into Fallout games and stuff. So, uh, I'll, I'll give it a try. I'm a little interested. Mm-hmm. I like space stuff. Maybe yeah. maybe I'll, I'll, I'll like this. There are some weird technical issues. Supposedly, so Digital Foundry did a whole thing. Supposedly, it runs pretty good. Okay. Like all things considered, which is shocking for a Bethesda game because usually mm-hmm. it's like kind of broken. The HDR is fucked. The game really? looks ugly as hell, <laughs> and uh, the whole thing's gray and like wishy washy and stuff. Okay. Uh, it reminds me of how a uh, Call of Duty Warzone would break sometimes, and the HDR would turn on when it's not supposed to, and like everything would be like it would look like it's filmed in log. Okay. Um. Yeah, this game kind of has that effect, so I don't know what's gonna happen there. But uh, I'll try it, and I'll and I'll I'll see what's up. <sighs> Sorry, I'm just looking for. I saw a tweet like listing Starfield reviews, so I'm trying to like. Oh, okay. Find it. I know you have the article in here. Who does that? Uh, Stealth does. Yeah. Tweets those. A uh, Wario tweets those. Uh, while we're on Starfield, still people in the chat want us, or at least some one person in the chat wants us to talk about the pronouns controversy. Have you heard about that? Oh my God! Uh, you can make it so your pronouns are what you use in the real life. So, so if, oh no! When you're making your character, yeah, uh, you you give them a name and then it says he him next to it. Yeah, or you can switch it to she her or you can switch it to they them yeah and that's it right that's all that you get right and like so what (laughs) honestly if we're being honest that seems like a pretty important thing to have in a character creator (laughs) yeah if it's gonna be anywhere the character creator makes a lot of sense i i just love it when people are saying like oh i can't believe uh you gotta pick your pronoun it's like motherfucker everybody has pronouns it's not just for yeah, I, you know, I, I picked, non-binary people. In Baldur's Gate, you get to pick whether or not you have a cock. Yeah, you same, get to, you get to pick it. Same thing in Cyberpunk. You yeah, can pick yes. you can pick what your genitals are. You can pick the size of your wang, yeah. the size of your hooters. You can have boobs and a wang. So I think if you're gonna do that, having the pronoun <laughs> is important. You know? Yeah. Cause that then you're you're confusing everything. Yeah. So like putting the pronoun there is a little important if you're gonna go crazy with the character creator. It yeah. It's it's really not that deep. It's not it's not that big of a deal. If it is a big deal, uh I highly recommend opening your door, stepping outside, and touching your grass. <laughs> Rubbing your face. Rubbing your it. face in your in the grass. I saw a clip of Dr. Disrespect getting all mad about it. Yeah. And then he like tried to act like that's not what he was mad about. No, that's And it was like very obvious that that's what it was. Yeah. I don't know how you could walk that back. Like if you're going to be a bitch about it, at least stick to yeah. your guns. Seriously. Um, What else? Any other? No, I think that's it. Okay. So apparently, so Wood was saying that there are things that they lied about. Like, I think Todd Howard said, you can go to that moon. You see that moon? You can go to that moon. And apparently you can't go to that moon. Okay. So that 
is a little reminiscent of No Man's Sky when they right. were like, uh, you can do all these things and it turned out you couldn't. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. I haven't seen any roundups of people pointing out all of the holes in the in the yeah. uh, in, in the game. I feel like this is. <sighs> I feel like this is a game where, like, you know, it's coming from Bethesda, who has, like, a long history and a pedigree for certain types of games. And you expect them to hit a certain mark when a game launches. And for them not to hit that mark, like, for them not to get anywhere close to the mark, I think could shift a lot of people's opinions towards this game. Because this game was a 10 out of 10 in everybody's mind up until it came out. Yeah. I think that's another issue. It, it is reminding me a lot of No Man's Sky because yeah. when that game was coming out, remember, I was like, everybody's got to fucking relax because this game's going to come out. It's not going to be what you expect. Yeah. The problem with this game, I have again, I haven't played Starfield yet, but the, the problem seems to me that it is just a Bethesda game in space. Yeah. Nothing has changed from old Bethesda games. It's just that, but in space. Mm -hmm. And we have had many years since the yeah. last bethesda game and no actual technical changes like yeah. every the whole rest of the industry aged and bethesda did not right so that's where the problem is and everybody's mm -hmm. expectations got a little crazy mm -hmm. but apparently todd howard was saying some shit uh and then didn't deliver on it right. so i don't know that extent of it but i will play it probably tomorrow on this twitch channel mm -hmm. <sighs> i did see alana pierce uh fly to pluto yeah i saw that I, i'm still not exactly sure because i think the controversy was there was only fast travel in space and she showed that you can not in real time but you can actively fly yeah your your spaceship to the planet everyone was expecting no man's sky style you take off on the planet and you enter space and yeah. then you can land on another planet right and like seamlessly mm -hmm. but really it's you get in your ship it loads you you select where you want to go it puts it like fast travels there like it's yeah. not like that you can go into space and fly around but if you want to go to a planet you have to be like can i go to the planet right and like select a menu item and then go to the planet uh she was like that's pluto i'm going there and went right for pluto mm -hmm. took seven ish hours yeah and then it turned out pluto was just a jpeg <laughs> and she flew through the jpeg <laughs> so you, she didn't actually land yeah. on it she you just saw it get bigger and bigger and mm -hmm. pixelated and pixelated until eventually she flew through yeah. it Anyway, that's the Starfield talk. Yeah. I think we're good. Okay. It makes me wonder. I mean, this is slightly off topic, but I, I'm not expecting Ubisoft Star Wars game that's coming out. Uh, what's it called? Outlaws? Yeah. That had... It, that it showed, the demo they showed getting in your starship and like taking off from planet into space. Yeah. I assume that's just a loading screen. Yeah, so the way it seemed to me was they they are on the planet, they f they fly through the planet a little bit, then they enter the atmosphere, and it goes to gray like you're going through a cloud. Yeah. That seems like the loading screen. Right. Thing. You're going through a cloud. I'm not expecting uh, that game to be anywhere near like a No Man's Sky or what we thought Starfield was going to be. But like, how crazy would it be if, that, if a Ubisoft <laughs> game with a Star Wars license gave us the space travel we thought we were getting in this i think they will but but i i don't think it'll be like no man's sky which right. is completely seamless i think it will be hidden loading screens right which i think starfield would have benefited from right uh um, i do think with all the technical issues starfield is having kind of makes 30 frames a second seem not as bad it kind of makes it seem reasonable honestly for a bethesda game it's a uh, a technical marvel that it maintains 30 frames per yeah second. i don't know what i'm gonna play it on i mean i want to play it on my ally but uh i i i don't really have much room on my pc and mm -hmm. i only have a 3060 i don't know if it's gonna run good on there uh ads ruined twitch in the chat says uh did you see the titles just added to the nintendo switch online five minutes i put that in the keep we have breaking news breaking news here breaking is. news New Switch Online games available right now. I have never heard of Kirby's Star Stacker. Uh, yeah, so for Super Nintendo, it's Kirby Star Stacker. For oh, it's a like Poyo Poyo. Ah, uh, for NES, it's Joy Mech Fight and Downtown Niketsu March Super Awesome Field Day. Oh hell yeah, brother! <laughs> Let me get that game. And for Game Boy Color, it's Quest for Camelot. I forgot there were Game Boy Color games. <laughs> this game looks cute. Yeah. I don't know anything about that. 
I don't know anything about any of these Oh, games. downtown Neketsu March for March Super Awesome Field Day is uh, what do you call it? It's a, uh, it's one of your games. It's a, oh, it's a uh, River City game. Yes, it's a uh, Kunio Kun. There you go. It's in that series. Oh, which one is that though? Looks wackier. How many of these were on NES? There are a lot of them. I could imagine. Oh, Joy Mech Fight. It's the guy. It's the guy from uh, he was in, he's the character of him in Smash Brothers, I think. Is he? Uh, Sukapon. Oh yes, looks, looks like yes. Sukapon. Yeah, that's Sukapon. Sukapon, these nuts. So, uh, Downtown Neketsu March Super Awesome Field Day is a direct sequel to the game that we know as River City Ransom. Oh, okay, interesting. It is an action sports game. <laughs> released in japan yep, i remember this now uh it is arguably the most popular game in the kunio kun series in japan as can be seen by its multiple sequels and remakes along with battle royale mode uh battle royale mode yeah so this is the uh sports-based sequel to river city ransom uh thank you forbidden seeker for the six months a rod dragon for 23 months are you guys playing starfield tonight i will play it tomorrow uh tonight i'm playing armored core uh make a make oh fox thank you for the 100 335 bits hello wolf bros it's hey. been a while since i've caught a stream i just wanted to let you know that you two produce some of the most informative and enjoyable content on the internet you guys have kept me hooked since 2020 and have gotten me through countless hours of worth of work also my name is caleb fox and when you first said the other Caleb Fox's name in the chat, it blew my dick off. <laughs> I'm glad that phrase is taken. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, there's two of you. Yes. Now I know. <laughs> Thank you for the for the bits and for listening since 2020. Yeah. Otaku Sam, thanks for 20 months. Today, I was bullied by a GameStop employee for not re renewing my membership. Tell him, fuck you. Yeah. Can you imagine if, like, Sony... Did that like if you, if people choose not if I because I'm not going to renew my PlayStation membership, uh, and they're just like, you know, you pussy. Yeah, what are you a fucking yeah. pussy? Not uh, <laughs> renewing. You, not renew you just subscription? bought a PlayStation Five. Don't you asshole? want your cloud saves? You piece yeah. of shit, dumbass loser. Look at this. Everybody look at this loser. Look at this idiot. What are you not having money? That's a raven. Thank you for the twenty months. No, because I just bought your stupid system that gave me problems trying to set up i didn't i i was saving this talk to we're talking about <laughs> you but let me just derail the podcast and turn this into will's experience trying to set up a sure. playstation 5 oh my god okay so i got the i got the thing it's the spider-man 2 version it looks a nice <laughs> okay i i want i'm farting right now hold on i'm so excited <laughs> that was that was real time yes so uh i i so first thing I did, I set it up just cold. I logged in, did all the, you know, first time boot up features and whatnot. Uh, then I shut it down again. And I, I actually bought an M.2 drive to put in okay. beforehand because I knew I had a lot of games to transfer over from my PS4. So I did that. That works really well. It's a little bit scary because uh, you got to like snap a lot of things in place. Taking the, the panel off is scary. That wasn't as scary. What was scary is like when you put the, the drive in, you got to push down. Okay. I was afraid like I was going to snap it. Okay. But it all works fine. All great. Transferring my games over. Now, both the Xbox uh, series and the PS5 have a similar feature where if you turn on your old system and it's everything's on the same Wi-Fi, it'll just transfer over to the new system. Okay, that's cool. The difference is Xbox is only wirelessly which takes forever and I don't think is worth it. But PS5, you can hook it up to your PS4 through a LAN cable directly. Okay, that's cool. And that transfers everything over in an hour. Okay. So that's what I did. I did it at midnight, so I didn't go to bed until one in the morning, but that's <laughs> that's a Will problem. Okay. That's Will's fault. So everything transferred over. Beautiful, wonderful. Uh, no problems there. Turn it on the next day. I'm going to make sure everything is working. It didn't, tr it, everything transferred over, but it transferred over the PS4 versions of everything. It didn't automatically upgrade that, to the PS5 that. version. 
is unacceptable. It, yeah, that was bad. So I had to go in individually for every game that I knew had a PS5 version and manually download the PS5 versions of the game. So once that was done, it didn't end there because okay. I had to make sure my save files also transferred over. And different games handle it differently. The Resident Evil games just worked. They saw my PS4 save was on the hard drive. Like, okay, we're going to convert this to a PS5 version. Boom, you're done. Play the game. Tony Hawk's 1 and 2, you have to go to the PS4 version, upload your save to the cloud again from the Tony Hawk's in-game menu, back out of the PS4 version, go into the PS5 version of the game, and select download save from the in-game menu. No, I don't like that at all. What's worse is I have now the PS4 and PS5 versions of Rollerdrome on my PS5, and I do not know how to convert my PS4 save over to the PS5 version of Roller Drum. I think I think you might be fucked into playing just the PS4 version of Roller Drum on your PS5. Right. Yeah. I think that yeah. I think I, you're just screwed. With yeah. It. Unless I play Roller Drum again, which is fine. I love that game, but <laughs> kind of was hoping I didn't have to. Uh, so you recently just did this exact same process on the Xbox Correct. Like two weeks ago. Yeah. And that was fun? It was. I would say it was a little more seamless on PS5 because of the direct connects uh, with the LAN cable. The Xbox, you know, it, everything was taking too long. Not everything was transferring over quickly enough. So I just, I stopped it. And then I just booted the Xbox cold. And I just downloaded the games I wanted to play individually. And everything transferred over. Also, too, like, it didn't upgrade the games to the Series X version automatically. I had to try to play them first, then download an update Oh, that's them. not cool either. And then... That's and just then as bad. I didn't realize that some of those games were saved on my external drive that I have. And it had a little symbol that I had to look up that meant transfer it to the internal drive to play the Xbox One version. Because you can't play Xbox One ver Xbox Series X versions of games from an external hard right, drive that makes sense yeah, yeah that yeah i didn't realize that yeah that, so. make, that makes sense but as of right now like both i think have their issues i feel like xbox does a better job of like facilitating any issues you may have with it mostly because the save files just fucking work mm -hmm. i don't have to like futz around with this and that and i also don't have to download two different versions of a game okay so but for all intents and purposes, like I think they're about equal in terms of uh, usability, uh, user experience, and transferring over stuff. Okay, they just so. have their own problem. Yeah, exactly. It's like problems. yeah, Xbox does this, but Sony does this. So know? when I get a new console, yeah, I just turn it on, and whatever downloads off of the network downloads off the network. I don't right. even look at my old system anymore. Okay. That I just trust the cloud saves and whatever happens. Right. happens. Even with all the switches that I've had, yeah. I just buy the new one and download everything. I don't even try to transfer. So I think I mean because I've grown used to like the iPhone experience where like you back it up and then you restore it to your new phone and everything's just there. So I got burned because last time I got a new iPhone, yeah. I wanted to do it cold. Mm -hmm. And then all of my two-factor stuff oh, locked yeah. me out because of that. So yeah. now See, I know that, not to do that. Yeah, again. that's why. So it's just a seamless yeah. you know, transition from last generation to the next one. And I feel like you know, both systems came close enough to the ideal of it, but I think they still have a long way to go yeah. for like the next generation of these systems right have you played anything on the on the ps5 i have i i actually beat resident evil 4 oh. the ps5 or like i was able to transfer that the ps4 version over to the ps5 version oh and i was able to actually beat that over the weekend you didn't have to pay extra no that's another thing that's another fucking thing some of the games you do have to pay extra for like if i wanted to upgrade spider-man to the ps5 version it's ten dollars if i wanted to upgrade ghost of tsushima it's the full price of the game that's fucked. <laughs> yeah. It, there's no consistency between that's any because of them. that's like a premium that is they they made a different version for the PS5. Did, is that what they're I think that is? that's like the remaster or something. Cuz Ghost of Tsushima came out for the PS4. Yeah. yeah. So did Spider-Man. Yeah. And yeah, but then they had that had like a 
rematch. They changed Peter Parker's face in the PS5 version. So that's its own completely different version. Yeah. That, that, the Spider-Man games were another one where I had to load the old version, upload the save, load the new version, mm-hmm. download the save. But uh, but yeah, Resident Evil 4, everything was free. The upgrade to the PS5 version was free. The upgrade to the save file was automatic. I realized as I was playing it, like, I I mean, this is me. Like, I couldn't really tell like a visual difference. But over time, I started to feel the differences in the controller. Like between what the, the PS4 and PS5 version? Okay. Because the Dual Sense, the triggers actually do something. Like if I'm if I'm unloading on an enemy and I start to run out of ammo, the rumble changes, and it starts to like click differently to indicate that you're running out of ammo. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. That was cool. And like, oh, and like you know, walking on different uh, terrain like affected the way the rumble works in the controller that that stuff was cool it was just like little things that made it feel unique and different as opposed to the last gen version of the game how do you like the you got the spider-man the spider-man yeah Yeah. i i mean it's very very pretty you know you haven't seen it yet and i'll bring it over next time bring it over ground the mom and dad's house next time like a stupid fucking thing over it's very cool uh i do agree with kevin kenson a little bit i wish there was more red in the controller in the and in the the system itself but i think as it is it's very nice it's it's unique enough to uh show that you know it's a ps5 but it's cool ps5 it's in your grandma's ps5 <laughs> um it's just you know I, I keep it like tucked away like in the back you know so like i don't see it yeah <laughs> so but it is cool i do i do like it i do think it's a good if you can find if you can find it and you don't have a ps5 get it if you have a ps5 just get the face plates Normally we save the unboxings for, oh. for the end, but uh, why don't you open that? Then, okay. Will? Oh, oh, oh! Look at that! I didn't know we were getting this. <laughs> <laughs> this would have saved me like I, so much money. I didn't know this was coming. <laughs> it's the Spider-Man faceplate face plates. and the and, and the, the controller. controller. <laughs> I did. I had no idea those were coming. I literally there's also a flyer in there yeah it just says uh oh it says that we have to say that this is an ad even though they're not giving us money (laughs) uh thanks for the free gift playstation uh make sure it's clearly visible okay well okay you were you were you heard us yeah uh all right so yeah this is they 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 they, i did i had no idea if i knew they were sending this obviously i would have been like don't get that right get the get a regular playstation because the regular playstation was like 450 like the week after i (laughs) pre-ordered yeah about that uh so anyway now we can look at what the controller looks like so i don't have to bring this to mom and dad's no i i got it thank you (laughs) uh all right. Ugh. I'll open this. Okay. I mean, you don't have to open. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Why not? Whatever. Because there is something I don't think a lot of people realized about this version, or maybe they do now because like everyone's doing their unboxing. I will it. say I did give away my uh, black uh, controller. Okay. I'm... And I kind of wish I didn't. Yeah. Because now I have the black PlayStation. Uh huh. So this is cool. The, yeah. Because this is mostly black. Yeah. So I'm I, like... I like it. This is not coming out of the box. No, that's so tight in there. Yeah. And and the the packaging that Sony uses is bad. Like it's yeah. it's uh flimsy like paper. Yeah. Eh. If you if you rip it, you rip it. There we go. It's a box in a box. There it is. Okay. All right. So this is the this is the top plate. This that's is the important one. This is the one everybody sees. It's the one where uh, the Venom symbiote is slowly taking over. I mean, I look Spider-Man. sick it does. on the camera. So this is the bottom plate. This is... They sell it the disk drive version and the diskless version. Uh, this is the disk drive version. And what people don't, I think, realize is that it also has the Spider-Man logo on it. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Was so black. there's a Spider-Man logo on two sides. That's cool. Yeah. I feel like maybe this should have been Miles's symbol yeah. instead. but Or the other way. That mean? should be, this should be Miles' symbol. Well, that's because Peter's the one who gets taken over by the symbiote. 
and that's Peter's. Yeah, but that's symbol. that's on black. Yeah, so Miles's costume is black. Oh, so this should have been Miles's red Spider-Man logo. Okay, okay. that's but, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. But either way, so, this is cool. Yeah. This is a cool faceplate. Yeah. Uh, I, like I believe it. it's sixty-five dollars for the Spider-Man faceplates. I think it's like what is it seventy for the controller? Usually, yeah. So, Sounds about right. There you go. Right, well, thanks, PlayStation. Thank you, Sony. Sorry, Will. <laughs> and you're welcome. <laughs> um, okay, let's blast through everything else because we're we're yeah. running late and we started late because <laughs> of all of our technical problems. Uh. All right, so Nintendo announces new Switch bundles. We'll blow, we can blow through this real quick. So this is... Uh, uh, we got to talk about this because every time we talk about Switch sales recently, I yeah. say they got to just do the bundle they always do, mm -hmm. the Mario Kart 8 bundle, and sell it for cheaper. They're doing the Mario Kart 8 bundle. Not selling it for cheaper. No. <laughs> uh, available October 6th, the Nintendo Switch system bundle for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe offers players everything they need to start their Super Mario Adventures, including a digital version of the game and a three-month uh, individual membership to Nintendo Switch Online. October 6th also marks the release of two new Switch Lite bundles uh, featuring new designs inspired by Animal Crossing New Horizons and a digital version of the game. That these bundles are cool. Yes. So the color is the same as we've gotten the 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 what do you call the red one? The pink one? Coral. Yeah. The coral switch light and the turquoise switch light. But the back has like a printed on like a yes. crossing leaf pattern. Mm -hmm. And that's cool. Yes. I like that. So that's a oh, and there's like a little uh a little uh printed on uh uh animal crossing leaf yes. icon on the front that's like colored that is this is uh i think a great way to take the surplus that you have yeah and make something special out of it yes uh i should note that the uh the mario Kart bundle comes with the regular switch online um trial not the switch online plus expansion pack so that does not include the dlc courses that you get with the game that Those is are, dumb the, yeah this is literally the one that they've been selling for years. Yes. <laughs> they couldn't even shoehorn in a better Switch Online no. situation. That's upsetting to see. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm happy about the Animal Crossing bundle. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's, you know, that's why Nintendo is still on top. They do frugal business decisions like this. It's also rare for Nintendo to do a pack-in game anymore. Yeah. So the only pack-in game we've seen is uh, Mario Kart. Mario Kart. Yeah. And is this is this bundle? Mm -hmm. So getting with Animal Crossing is kind of cool. Yeah. Um. So there you go. It's, it's so far not cheaper. Maybe you might see that like Costco for cheaper or like yeah, Walmart. They I might, would say they might do a retailer like yeah, uh, like, like price cut. I don't know. Yeah, but it, like if you don't already have a Switch or if you need like a fourth Switch for some reason, there you go. Stay tuned for uh, the Black Friday show yes. when we talk about all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, real quick, I while you were yapping on about your uh, PlayStation, my next gen spot, experience, Will Willie Pete's next gen baby. <laughs> uh, I was checking out Starfield on here, and it is available. Uh, I went to download it, and I realized I didn't have space. But mm -hmm. then, space, yeah, uh, space game. I remembered I can. I realized I could just play it on the cloud. Oh, there you go. So I mean, I'll go through this later and try to delete stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, I might just play it on the cloud just to, because yeah. I don't know how much I'm gonna be playing of it. So now again, another reason why I wanted to wait to play it on Game Pass. Yeah. All right. Uh, real. I guess real quick we gotta go through the Super Mario Wonder. Uh, all right. Let's do it real episode. quick. What'd you think? It was cool, right? It was cool. Yeah. All right. Next up. <laughs> Does this have like features and stuff? Like, yeah. What, it what it breaks it down like section by section. It it's a lot. So I don't know if you wanna. No. Did okay. you see it? I did. Yeah. Okay. What did you think of? I thought it looks cool. I don't know if it's like. I'm not going to know until I actually play like just how different it's going to be from like previous 2D Mario games. Because I feel like we reached a point where like if you just show me a 2D Mario game, I'm going to be like, it looks like all the other ones. I'm going to have to actually like play it to really see what the differences are. Yeah. You know? I mean, I just like that the style's different. Yes. Uh, For the most part. I mean, this picture right here makes it look exactly the same as yeah. the new Super Mario Brothers. But the actual gameplay... 
the animations and the model of Mario looks different than we've seen yeah. uh, recently. And I think that, like, here the model is different, mm -hmm. but you mostly see it in the way that he moves. Yeah. Uh, I, there was a couple of things that surprised me in this direct. One of them was all of the characters you can pick. They yeah. Take, they take the, the different colors of the toads and the different colors of the Yoshis and make them all individual selections. Instead yeah. of just, like, pick the toad and then pick the color of the mm -hmm. toad. Uh, I thought that was interesting. You could play as Daisy and Peach and Nabbit and all the Toads and all the Yoshis. So that's a lot of different characters. Yeah. It seems like they do have their own abilities. Like you see Peach and Daisy float, which is different. Yeah. I'm assuming Luigi's going to have the float jump. Uh, it says here in the character select screen that Yoshis and Nabbit won't take damage. Yeah. But they also won't transform with Yeah, powers. I mean, Yoshis and Nabbit, those are basically like my first video game play. Like if you've never played a game before, you can play it. You know, it's easy mode. It's easy mode, yeah. yeah. So that's an interesting idea. Yeah. Um, that surprised me. The other major difference that w that is going to change this game compared mm -hmm. to other ones is the uh, equipable abilities. Did you see that? Yeah, I feel that's that's been in other Mario games though, just in a different way. Because like, like Super Mario World. You can store an ability. No, you well, you store a power up. You store a power up, right? And then in New Super Mario Brothers on the DS, the original one, you can you can accrue power ups and have them in the bottom menu, and then activate them when you need so them. So these aren't power ups; these are additions to your move set and stuff. I like, think I misinterpreted with the video. Then this was towards the end of of, okay. of, the, of the stream. Uh, you have like a skill tree. I mi I must have missed that. So I like you know when he's floating, when he takes his cap and he floats with the cap. Yeah, that's a skill tree item, like like, like a skill tree thing. Like you enable right. that, and then you just have that for the game if yeah. you have it enabled. I don't know if you can enable all of the abilities at once, right. or if you select only a few to use while you're playing the level. But yeah, that is in addition to whatever items you get. Like you can get the drill hat and then also do the float thing. As if you played Paper Mario or Mario Luigi RPG, then you may be raised then you might be raising an eyebrow here, but the badges in Super Mario Brothers Wonder are a bit different, though they work on a similar level. You unlock badges by spending flower coins, uh saving poplins, or clearing badge challenges. Equipping a badge will change the way you play, giving Mario and his friends some new abilities. This is what you were talking about. Mm -hmm. One badge allows you to drop kick uh to dolphin kick underwater, while another lets you do wall climb jump just uh to just directly up a wall. Some badges will also help players out if they're struggling. There's a badge that gives you a safety bounce, for instance, and another that gives you an item sensor. So, so the safety bounce is if you hit lava, mm -hmm. you get like a recovery. You get like one Got recovery, yeah. kind, kind of like a like a kind of like the blue orb in Sonic. Yes. You get one hit, but Got in it. this case, it's just lava. Mm -hmm. The chat is telling me you get one badge per level. So okay. when you play a level, you can enable one of the yeah. badges. Uh, well, we did also see new abilities. We saw the elephant. Yeah. Uh, we saw f it makes your character bigger, stronger, and lets you run across big gaps. The bubble ability, uh, taking down, good for taking down impervious enemies, and you can also create platforms with them. Mm -hmm. And the drill ability, uh, you can use it to drill through the ceiling or the floor, which lets you get past obstacles. Uh, also, there are the special flowers that you can grab and they change the level. Yeah. Like the level the wonder, gets all. The wonder flowers. Yeah. yeah. Mike ha Harvat in the chat says, those of us who are used to the wall jumping are going to have a problem with that wall jumping thing. Yeah. I think that there's just regular wall jumping and then there's a badge that does an extra thing. Like yeah. You might that's be able what it to, sounds like. You might be able to do the Mega Man X wall jumping if you have this ability. Like yeah. you can scale a wall a flat wall instead yeah. of having to bounce between two. Uh, that's the thing is that you get all of the Mario moves plus extras with the badges. Yeah. That's what I think is completely different about this game than the other. Yeah. Games. Uh, so we did see that there's four player co-op in the game, like the new super Mario brothers right. games. Mm, uh, not online though. No, the online is weird. Yes. So this is what they say about, Online online play means you'll see in real time where other players are in the game. You'll spot their live player shadows on the map and in levels, and you can bump into a shadow to revive yourself if you lose all your health. 
If you spot others in game, you can send them a greeting or share items in game with each other to help them out. Nintendo puts this as a subtle connection between players, which is a nice way of wording it. Um, we can also place standees in levels now. These are handy for difficult sections as they will revive ghosts who touch them. Standees also display heart points showing others uh, how many people you've helped out. So I don't know how I feel about the ghost thing. Like you can race your ghost friends. Yeah. I think that's just, so I don't, I really don't know how it works. To me, that didn't feel like real time, mm -hmm. but I think people were telling me it is real time. You can real time race your friends. It sounds like the, how Dark Souls does it. Almost. That's how it is in just a regular level. Right. But you can also like group up with your friends and race them through the level. Right. But you're a ghost, so you don't actually like touch each other. Yeah. Um, I don't know how I feel about it, and I don't know if it's gonna work great. So this is how online multiplayer, like if you want to play with people, this is how it works. You create a room for friends to join. You'll be able to see which levels your friends are playing. Uh, start playing through the course together. Uh, and enter a race. It's like together, but not. It's basically like you're racing through the level. You're. It's not like a traditional co-op experience. Yeah, I don't know how I feel yeah. about it. To me, it seems like it's their way of going around the real-time internet connection that they had so much trouble with. Like with yeah. Mario Maker, there's all this stutter and yeah. stuff. Uh, that it seems like a cop out to me. It seems like you could have easily have done real-time co-op. Yeah online you just didn't want to change your net code to make it work good yeah so do you guys think there will be a nintendo direct on september 13th uh i think there will be one probably late september if i, I guess i have i did see some rumors that it might be next week i don't know so the rumors are, are saying that because every it's very frequently uh next week like yeah. is the window when they usually do nintendo direct right. but i think that they're gonna be late i think the iphone announcement is next week yeah 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 all right uh so i'm excited for this game when is yeah. it out uh it's like three days after sonic superstars okay so <laughs> so it's like the 90s icons going head to head once again october 6th okay I am once again interested in Sonic Superstars. Okay. Because I hear they took the physics from Sonic Mania. Oh. And they're just like, it's 3D now. That's good. Yeah. Because the last few times they tried to do 2D Sonic on their own, like it, it hasn't felt like the Genesis version. And then mm -hmm. Sonic Mania comes along and is like, it's, it's like this, bro. And so yeah. Sega's like, oh, cool. We own this now. So uh, that made me a lot more interested in it. Yeah. Uh, Superstars is October 17th. Oh. So. That is significantly later. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Switch 2. Let's talk about it. Okay. If we haven't talked about this enough. Let's talk about it. Uh, known video game leaker, I'm Hero 2, has posted on Reddit to clarify some points about uh, which were originally posted by an imposter on Switch's Discord server. I'm a Hero 2 says that Square Enix have had a Switch 2 development kits for a while now and are bringing Final Fantasy VII Remake to the upcoming system. He also confirmed that he can verify the platform is backwards compatible with a few games tested. The console uses new cartridges, which are presumably bigger, and the system has a new camera feature lining up with previous leaks on Switch 2 platform. Interestingly, he says that uh, the Final Fantasy VII Remake looks and runs a lot like the PS5 game on the Switch 2 dev kit. He went on to say that the port took no time, I'm told. Could be a launch game. Not sure. It looks as though the, his Reddit account has now been deleted. Oh. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, so why do we trust this guy? I don't. I'm sure he's he's leaked things before, and that's why people are, are trusting him. I, I don't know. I saw this, and I put it in here because I feel like something that doesn't feel right about this. I'm pretty sure Sony funded partially the development of final fantasy 7 remake so i don't think square is able to put it on a competing console so soon and final fantasy 7 remake technically isn't finished so, true so i don't i don't that part i don't believe i also i'm the backwards compatibility like it makes sense that like that's what we all want but we also know nintendo like doesn't always do what we want them to do so 
I'm still I still don't know if the Switch 2 will have backwards compatibility. I am willing to bet that it will. Um largely because they've said that they want the uh, account system to be transferable right. and if they do that they're probably going to want digital purchases to be transferable right. and if they're going to do that then they might as well put, make the cartridge slot you know uh-huh. relatively the same. Mm-hmm. Uh so I believe that the Final Fantasy 7 thing is weird. That's yeah. just a weird game to, to to pick out from. I don't the camera that makes sense too. Uh, I don't think it's weird that developers like Square Enix are playing around with the Switch Two development kit. Right. I heard that Gamescom they had some back rooms that had Switch Two in it. Right. Uh, and I believe those rumors because that just sounds legit. Yeah. Um, that's the place you would go and show people like game developers the Switch Two. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Final Fantasy VII remake seems weird. I I thought it was on Xbox. It's not. Yeah, yeah it, no. Because I remember they revealed it. Sony revealed it at the same E3 they did the Last Guardian, mm-hmm. and uh, that was like a big one. It was Last Guardian, Shenmue Three. No, you're and, right. It, it yeah. was a big PlayStation thing. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what Square is doing. Like, I don't know what their whole deal is. Like, I feel like something's happening with Square. Well, they just had Phil Spencer come out at a show and say, like, you know, we're we're working with Xbox to, like, bring more Final Fantasy stuff to Xbox. Like, they're bringing Final Fantasy fourteen over. I think it's possible that Square has Final Fantasy VII Remake running on a Switch, too. Yeah. I, but that's why I don't like leaks like this, is because... That doesn't mean we're getting it. That yeah. just means that they got a Switch dev kit and they wanted to fuck around with it, and that's what they decided. And to even use. if we are getting it, the, this article says it was running at like PS5 level. There is no way that yeah. the Switch Two is going to be PS5 level. Dev kits traditionally have more power than retail versions of the system, so that they can do all these tests. And that's such a subjective thing. Yeah. To P- PS5 level, isn't that 4K? This thing's yeah. not 4K. Yeah. So that's not mm-hmm. going to happen. Um. Also, we previously got a leak about the dev kits mm-hmm. saying that they were not backwards compatible. Right. And everybody believed that. And that's why I don't like these leaks. Yeah. Because everyone's flip-flopping. I'll say again, I think that is going to be fucking backwards compatible. Right. And these dev kits don't aren't indicative of what we're going to see. Mm-hmm. So I don't think we're going to see Final Fantasy VII Remake. That doesn't make any sense. But I do think that it's probably true that these companies do have Switch 2 dev kits. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, okay. Let's talk about Volition shutting down. Okay. Because that's a big deal to you. Yes. Oh, it's a big deal in general. Uh, Volition Games, the studio behind fr- franchises like Saints Row and Red Fraction, has been shut down effective immediately. Uh, this, the news first broke on Twitter.com with several employees posting that they had been let go and that the studio was no more. In an official statement on the studio's website, Volition states that the Swedish holdings company Embracer Group, which acquired the studio in 2018, was forced has forced it to cease operations as part of Embracer's company-wide restructuring. Volition's full farewell post reads as follows. Uh, The Volition team has proudly created world-class entertainment for fans around the globe for 30 years. We've been driven by passion for our uh, community and always worked to deliver joy, surprise, and delight. This past June, Embracer Group announced the, a restructuring program to strengthen Embracer and maintain its position as a leader in the video games industry. As part of that program, they evaluated strategic and operational goals and made the difficult decision to close Volition effective immediately. To help our team, we are working to provide job assistance and help smooth transition for our Volition family members. We thank our customers and fans around the world for all the love and support over the years. You will always be in our hearts, Volition Games. So... I have never been a big fan of uh, Saints Row. I got to be honest, I've never played any. I've I've never been interested because to me they seem like knockoff Grand Theft Autos that just take the humor, they just run with the humor, and that was my least favorite part of Grand Theft Auto. So the only game, I, the only one of those games I really put any time into is the fourth one, which is the most out there wacky one. You basically get superpowers. And what, I've, what I realized was 
everything you said is true. It mm-hmm. is a Grand Theft Auto clone that like runs with the wacky humor. But I think it's because they run with the wacky humor that they are able to create their own identity. And it it, it feels like more than just a Grand Theft Auto clone. It's like it has its own unique style and voice and character to it. It's not, you know, because Grand Theft Auto, yeah, it's got all the humor, but it's also trying to be like a serious story about crime. And, you know, it's trying to like push like boundaries of like storytelling and, you know, graphical fidelity and like what you can do in a video game. Saints Row is literally just, here's a bat that looks like a dick. Hmm. Go, go hit a bunch of school kids with it. You know, it's like, it, it knows what it is and it's not trying to be anything else. It, it, it embraces the anarchic humor of it and just makes, makes it fun. Cause sometimes Grand Theft Auto is like too serious for its own good. Mm-hmm. So, okay. So how do you feel about them showing though? I mean, it sucks. <laughs> and I think it sucks even more because like Volition was a THQ studio and then THQ shut down. They survived and Embracer picked them up. And because of Embracer's own screw ups that had nothing to do with Volition, they decided to shut Volition down. I did not know that Embracer was the reason that they are shutting down. Yeah. I, th- I thought they decided, like, we're done. I, th- I thought uh, uh, Volition just decided on their own accord that they were done. No, it was uh, f- it was through Embracer Group. Embracer Group looked at their whole portfolio because, we, as we talked about a while ago, uh, they lost a $2 billion investment from the Saudis and that screwed up their whole uh, so were, outlook. So, so they were like, sorry, Saints Row. Sorry, know. Saints Row. You know, your last game, you know, it wasn't great. So shut down. <laughs> yeah. So that's the end of you. But I think that also speaks to like what we were saying earlier about, you know, yes, Saints Row is now on PlayStation Plus. But had people bought the game when it came out, then there's a chance Volition could have survived. Because we're still in an industry where if your game doesn't make bank, the week it comes out, there's a very good chance your studio is going to get shut down. So I, f- I forgot who, I think it was the, you know, the Days Gone guy, someone who worked on Days Gone. is like, if you want a game to succeed, you have to buy the game at full price when it comes out. Yeah. I think that this is a case of like the big suits looking at numbers and that's it. And being yeah. like, oh, this one didn't perform. We got to pull the plug. We can't keep funding this. This mm-hmm. is a loss of money right here. Even though, like, there are other things. Embracer Group owns, like, a thousand studios. Yeah. Most of them are junk. <laughs> yeah. One of their higher tier studios is, like, they're like, nah, you're gone. Goodbye. Uh, Let's m- plow through some more stuff. Okay. Uh, That's So Raven, thanks for the 20 months. 1995 Poppy, thanks for the 100 bits. Are you guys going to play Liza PP? <laughs> yes. I do want to try it. I do want to check that. I don't know out. how far I'm going yeah. to get to it, but I do want to try it. Uh, Nick, Nico Moso, thank you for the 20 months. I want to talk about the SAG AFTRA strike okay. for, for, for video games. Uh, well, there's no strike yet. Right. But uh, the SAG AFTRA is calling on members to vote on whether or not the union should be, uh, be given authority to declare on strike for video game actors and performers. In addition to his strike against TV and film production companies, the union is currently negotiating. Uh, f- sorry, it's currently negotiating the terms of its interactive media agreement with a number of video game publishers, developers, and service firms. The union is calling for wage increases and protection against the unrestricted use of artificial intelligence, among other things. If members vote to authorize the strike, it does not necessarily mean that there will be a strike. Instead, as SAG Astra explains on its website, it gives the union the option to initiate a strike if negotiations with the video game companies uh, fails to produce a deal that satisfies its members. Uh, SAG Astra is currently uh, preparing to bargain with 10 companies that handle voice motion performance uh, in video games. That includes Activision, uh, Blind Light, Disney Character Voices, EA, Epic, uh, Formosa Interactive, Insomniac, Take-Two, VoiceWorks, and WB Games. So why them specifically? Well, I think it's the same reason, like, currently um, SAG is striking against specifically the AMPTP, which is like the collection of... It's like the one firm that like represents all the movie studios. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's these companies specifically because like these are the companies that will represent uh, f- 
the video game industry as a whole. So, so the ones I've never heard of are Blind Light and Formosa. I think those are... Formosa seems to be everything. Okay. <laughs> the Call of Duty, The Last of Us, God of War, Borderlands, uh, Death Stranding, and then uh, Blind Light, I think isn't a thing anymore. They got bought up by uh, Keyword Studios, and that's also everything. Blind Light did Elder Scrolls Fallout, Guild Wars, so they might also be doing Starfield. Well, these are the companies that specifically handle voice work, motion capture, and performance capture for right. video games. Right. So, really, the actors will be making a deal with them, mm -hmm. and it just so happens that, like, you know, Activision, Disney, EA, Epic, Take Two, Warner Brothers, like they also own their own video game production studios. So, vo video game voice actors do not get a lot of money. They don't get residuals. They don't get residuals either. But yeah. but I I think that I think that they don't get a lot of money. I think we no, they they don't get a lot of money. Period. Yeah yeah. And then on top of that, they, they don't, don't get, get any residuals. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's the same as movies. Like I think I feel like movie stars you go for the movie star sometimes. Right. And that isn't usually the case with video games. Right. But uh, I still think they should be paid. More, I think I, by the same token, video game we're like not like we're not diminishing their work here because they do put in a lot of work. It's just a different kind of work. They do have to right. like sit there and record voices for hours and hours and hours. A lot of times, especially if it's like the player character, they have to do a lot of screaming and yelling and grunts and like that puts a strain on the voice. It's a very specialized yeah. work that deserves. A and on top, yeah, of and on top of all that, you got a lot of studios now, like Naughty Dog specifically. They're adding a lot of, you know, performance capture, motion capture. Now the voice actors have to also do physical performances, yeah. possibly even some stunts. So that just adds more work and strain to, you know, the actors. So I looked into this because this affects everybody. Yes. Uh, when the SAG AFTRA strike was happening with TV and movies, mm -hmm. uh, there were they were calling to uh, not take they were calling for influencers to not take any deals with these companies either. So Correct. if they were doing uh, if if well, forgetting the Real Housewives no that's not a good example no. uh, if the Barbie movie wanted to do an activation with an influencer they were advised to not take that Correct. or else yeah. they would not ever be able to work with. Sag, sag yeah. yeah um also you'd be a scab and you'd be supporting these companies yeah. basically um apparently it's more than that though uh so i'd imagine i was basically ready for this to be the same with with uh video games mm -hmm. um we already just broke it by doing a playstation <laughs> <laughs> activation um well it's it's uh, not happening yet not happening yet. yeah yeah so um whatever the the the, the point is I was looking it up and on the SAG website, I don't have I don't have the actually Jackson told me about this and I didn't believe him and I yelled at him about it. I was <laughs> I was like I was like, no, it's just for sponsorships. I will just not do sponsorships and that's fine. Yeah. You know? But actually SAG asks you to not even post about these companies at all. Yeah. So us talking about the companies is scabbing. I feel like there's that's gotta be like within limit. Like I'm I'm not abiding by that. You're because okay. first of all, I don't really ever think I ever want to be involved with SAG. I don't think <laughs> I'm ever going to be a, a an actor, actor you right. know. But I think that that's just an overstep, you know. Like I, I'm cool with not working with Sony. Like right. I have potential opportunities with the Project Q or whatever the hell right. called the portal, and I, I'm cool with being like, no, I'll buy it myself. Whatever, right. I, I don't want to work with you. Uh, but not being able to talk about it at all, that's my whole job is done for to in support of somebody else. I feel know? like that that's got there's got to be like limits to that though. like yeah. like we're a new show. We're reporting the news. yeah, that's got to be well within you know our right to you know talk about that and not offend and we're not being sag. directly right. paid by these and companies. like you know when when you review hardware you know they're not telling film critics to not review movies because that's their job is to go out there and review the movies are you sure because they're telling influencers yeah. to not 
review the movie. Yeah, I, I'm reading <laughs> movie reviews every day. Mm. Like, RogerEbert.com gets updated every day. IGN is still posting movie reviews. I, I think that SAG is asking them not to, and they're just doing it anyway. That's what I think is happening. No, I don't. I don't think that falls under their requests. They they have guidelines specifically for influencers, and it says do not talk about these things at all. Right. And and maybe it's different for reviewers, but they're influencers too. You know. Right. I think it might be. I think they might just be using because like influencers. I think they're afraid because like a lot of influencers do get sponsored content from movie studio i think that's fair yeah i that, think i think don't take sponsored content that yeah because you don't want to work with these companies right. under a strike and that I, makes sense and i understand like you know if a if a cosplayer wants to dress up like for the ninja turtles movie but if the strike was going on i understand them not wanting to do that in support of like the the cause even though they're not being paid to do it you know i understand that mindset too but like you know what we do what you do i don't think that necessarily falls under the request to not talk about you know any any of the things they're striking against yeah again not an expert we would have to talk to somebody over at sag i'm just saying that and the wga i'm just saying that sag is asking influencers to not post about these right. companies even outside of sponsorships. Right. Uh, and I'd be willing to bet if you ask SAG, like, am I allowed to do this? They'd say, we ask that you don't post about it. That's what right. I think that they would say. And I think that that's a little much. Mm -hmm. So I'm cool with not working with these companies mm -hmm. when th the strike happens. Uh, I'm not cool with shutting the whole, pri the whole thing down. Because again, I'm not SAG. I have no intention of ever being saved. Yeah. And I can't just not work for months because the, the, the actor strike is still going on. Yeah. I can't afford to not work for months because I have a mortgage and shit. Yeah. <laughs> so like, and that's not my, that's not my, uh, uh, what do you call it? Industry. Yeah. I'm not in that, you know? Right. I'm on a complete other end. Anyway. Um, What else can we plow through? Uh, Do we need to... Is there anything here that we absolutely need to talk about? I don't... I mean, not necessarily... You kind of talked about what Doug Bowser was saying, that he really doesn't say anything. No, yeah. He's he's very good at, like, speaking for hours and not saying anything. Mm -hmm. Like, he really doesn't say anything. It's, a, it's an art form, how much can come out of that guy's This article mouth. is really short. Yeah, well... He, it, he doesn't say anything. It condenses from the IGN article, which is unedited. <laughs> uh, he basically just says like, "We're Switch is doing great. I'm I'm done counting how many years we are in the Switch because we're just we're doing great. Um, I ain't, we ain't talking about the next one though. Too bad." They ask him about like Charles Martinet and like what his new role is, and he's like, "Oh, we'll we'll see." <laughs> That's so dumb. Even like, did you see Charles Martinet? Somebody asked him at a convention, like, so what does it mean that you're a Mario ambassador? He's like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's a new role. I haven't I started know. yet. They I literally got... just made it up yesterday. I haven't done my onboarding yet. Yeah. All right. So that's right. it then. Yeah. Uh, we're done. But the big news. It's been a while. We got to do oh, one of boy. these now. Did that work? Did that go off? I don't know. It did. Okay. okay. Cool. Cool. Uh, we got to do the Tweet of the Week. Here it is. Check this out. Uh, I had to pull this one. This seemed really important. So this is from Obsolete Sony. Mm -hmm. 1997, Sony transformed gaming with the dual analog, introducing a crucial feature of modern controllers, the twin stick setup. And it's an ad mm -hmm. of their DualShock controller yes. for the PlayStation. Yes. And the Tweet of the Week is a quote tweet from David Doke. Doke. Yes. Who did what on GoldenEye? I forgot what his actual uh, job title was, but he was one of the original. Uh, he was one of the original creators of GoldenEye on N sixty four, and he actually got his face scanned and became a character in the game called Doctor Doak. Yes. Yes. And that's his Twitter handle is Doctor Doak. Uh, it is, except the description says it's a parody account. Damn it. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, anyway, he quote tweeted it and had a picture of the control layout in GoldenEye where you can have two whole controllers mm -hmm. doing dual analog. Suck it, Sony. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it is him because that's a pin tweet from a speech he gave at a convention. I don't know. The, the, the description says it's a parody account. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I, I can't tell. But whatever. So that's it. Let's uh, talk to you guys real quick. Yes. While I unbox one more thing that we have. Ooh. Let's start with uh, the people who left comments on last week's Wolf Den Podcast over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. Do you have that written? I do. Okay. Pauly Boy 85 Hey, Bob, my PS5 turned off on its own all the time, too. Turns out the power supply and the radiator both get clogged with dust after a while, and it makes the PS5 overheat and turn off. I followed a video how to take my PS5 completely apart and clean it out, uh, and it, and it have, haven't had the problem since. I just thought I would mention it because I've heard you say a bunch of times that your PS5 always turns itself off. It will definitely fix your problem, and... Uh, it probably would be a good idea for a video. So I know that PlayStations do, they're very susceptible to dust and overheating and, yeah. and stuff because of that. Uh, I opened mine up when I switched out the panels and yeah. uh, and, and did the, uh, the, the, the solid state issue and yeah. stuff. And there was no dust at all. <laughs> so I'm sure that that happens and I'm sure that it does overheat and that's what makes it, it turn off. It gets really hot. Like, it does I'm get really hot. I like pulled a disc out and it was like burning my hand how hot that thing gets so i'm sure that that does happen but yeah. uh i don't think mine gets enough dust to warrant uh the amount that it shuts off yeah all right so what i have here is something uh, let me read this note uh retro designs of 3d prints thank you dear bob First and foremost, I would like to thank you for all of your content. I am a big fan fan of the main channel, Wolf Den, Wolf Den Podcast. Shout out to Will. Hey, that's me. Wolf Den Clips, the Nintendo podcast with Wood, and even the Wolf Den Chill Beats playlist. I listen to it while working. I have been selling retro gaming products on Etsy for just over a year now, and I wanted to send you my newest product. It is this RGB Switch Dock cover. I am hoping you can try it out, and if you like it, Maybe it can be displayed in one of your videos one day. I am sending the prototype for the Super Mario Switch dock cover and the Zelda RGB dock cover. I was hoping you could share the Zelda cover with wood. Okay. Uh, I will bring it on Thursday. If my item is lucky enough to somehow make it to one of your video, please connect with, the, with me through Etsy and I will set up a promo code. Well, thank you. Retro Designs 3D Prints on etsy so here is the super mario one Ooh, gotta say i know you want me to give this to wood but this i like this i like this also this is cool so i'd imagine that it lights up yeah it looks like it lights you got up. usb on there plug, plug yeah, one yeah. of these bad boys in there i don't got usb on this laptop Ooh. Ooh. okay now do this one now do okay. this one no, I'll give this to Wood. Hold on. Just... So the switch dock just kind of sits in it, and then this okay. is on the front. Ooh. Oh, that's colorful. You know what? Never mind. I like that one. Now. Well, it's got a little controller here, and I think you can... Ooh, you can set it to music? Set it to music. Ah! There you go. All right. Thank okay. you, Retro Designs 3D Print. Very cool. I appreciate it, and thanks for watching and stuff um anyway next we got thrive 5462 the portal helps people who can't use the tv all the time because other people want to use the tv to watch something with the portal the ps5 can run in the background allowing someone to play with the TV. we talked about this already yeah uh this way you can watch wolf den on tv with youtube and play ps5 at the same time you can also play PS5 on the TV and watch Wolf Den on your phone. Or play PS5 on your phone and watch Yeah. <laughs> and watch fucking Wolf Den on the TV. So one thing I didn't talk about in my you know, trying to figure out the PS5 setting it up and whatnot, I learned that like I had to get a new switcher. Right. Uh HDMI switcher, because my old one like doesn't work with the PS5 and like the one cable I had isn't working with it. So that's all the PS5 and like the Series X, I think because they're so 
powerful. You have to be very specific with the things you use to your TV. Because one HDMI cable I have is like a unnecessarily long because I wasn't sure how much length I need. And I think that's affecting the signal uh, to the TV. Yes, you want your HDMI's less. We know, you know, yeah. less than ten feet. Yeah. Well, right now they're connected to a twenty-five foot cable, but that it's, there you go. It's working. Everything works fine because the, the switcher you recommended works. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'd imagine it's worse when you do the highest bandwidth that yeah. you need. Like if you're doing four K hundred twenty, you're gonna. I'm doing four K sixty. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. is fine. Uh, Timmy Fitz eight zero three two. I don't care about tweet of the week, but I miss the jingle for it. Well, I can't just play the jingle ha- and not have a tweet. Have of we got a special episode <laughs> for you today, Timmy? Uh, Ty says, super excited for the Dark Forces series, getting some love. One of my favorite series of all time. Yeah, that's nice that we're getting like a a good remaster of yeah. it. So and hopefully that means they'll do Jedi Knight. Yeah. Charlie Fenn says, I remember I used to stream a lot of to my Vita a few years ago as generally, depending on the game, it worked fairly well. I would do it in different locations, which was fine until I had a brief power cut where my PS4 was. I remember trying to explain to my dad over the phone how to turn it back on and his words, quote, there are no buttons on this thing. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Fuck that completely. I think I was in Florida once. and Did I have to have you turn my uh, PS4 on so I I could play Destiny using you on the Vita? Because I wanted the Hawk Moon in Destiny. And I never was never able to get it because it's random that yeah. you get it. And then a year after the game came out, they decided to just put it in the game. And you had to talk to a guy. And yeah. you only had three days to do it. And I was in Florida at the time. So I had to remotely log in on my Vita. And then you had to make it so I could connect to it. Yeah, I remember trying it on the Vita like, when it first came out. And like it wasn't good. Like The signal kept getting staticky. And I wasn't far from the PS4. I was just doing it to see how it was. And like it, it wasn't a good like signal strength. So I remember also sitting on my on our porch yeah. while our friend Jerry was washing my car because <laughs> I pay I, I don't uh, he needed money so right. I was like here's twenty dollars wash my car <laughs> and then I sat there and played Destiny while he did it um and and that were I thought that was the coolest thing ever yeah. to be able to play Destiny like that uh but a lot has changed since then yeah. And the technology has not. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, anyway, in the chat, hello. I played some Gunbrella. That felt really good. Says Nady Nene. I have to try that. That's another one. Oh, I'll is that come out yet? Yeah, there's a demo. Oh, okay, for free on the Switch. Uh, Mr. Rock PR had said Mario Wonder gives me Super Mario World vibes when I played it, and it was. Uh, I was in awe of the new art style. Thank you for the nine months. Yeah. Uh. That's great. That gives you Super Mario World vibes. Yeah, yeah, it was at PAX. I'm very upset that I did not go to PAX. Yeah. I thought, at- I thought it was closer to my Japan trip than it was. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't want to do too many trips. Um, But that would have been fun. And uh, as Edward Bova points out in the chat, Phil Spencer played it. And he had a blast with it. Good. I'm glad. Uh, Wait, Bob, you played Destiny 2. I... Played the whole campaign when it came out uh, and then didn't really love it. Destiny 1, I played the fuck out of. I played all of the DLC for Destiny 1. I really liked Destiny 1. But for whatever reason, Destiny 2, I didn't really get too into. And then I tried to re, I tried to get back into it like a few months ago and I didn't really, it didn't really catch me. Um, there was a video, but no audio for the transition. Oh, they didn't hear anything during the Tweet of the Week, James. No. Oh. Tweet of the week, tweet of the week, tweet of the week. You happy now? There you go. There you go. First try. Uh I have a lot of reworking to do here. Yeah. I also want to we're running off of a we've been running off of a laptop. Okay. I want to run off of that computer down there. Okay. So that's gonna be a whole project though i gotta yeah. i gotta redo everything and that that's why i don't want to do that yeah remember when phil spencer said exclusives don't sell consoles well the 1000 percent increase in sales in series x sales on amazon proves him wrong i feel like 
what he was trying to say was at this point in like the Xbox's and the Xbox brand's life cycle because they had a bad Xbox One lifespan and the Series X still isn't like hitting the numbers I guess they want. That one exclusive is not going to all of a sudden make it sell more than Sony. It's going to take them a really long time to get in the position that Sony's in or yeah. Nintendo's in because uh, they've been they haven't been prioritizing exclusives. Yeah. Uh, but and like Starfield's doing good sales wise, I'm sure. But yeah. uh, Microsoft is still going to have a really hard time uh, trying to bat away this first party stigma because yeah. they're really not killing it with first parties yeah I and that's why they're trying to sell systems in other ways like with game pass and yeah stuff. i think if they can keep the momentum from starfield going it could lead to you know selling more systems like starfield and then you know whatever the next game is maybe they bring back gears maybe they bring back fable yeah. you know they, they they keep the consistency going but they have they've shown that they like haven't been able to do that yeah Has has any good news been given on Starfield? Honestly, I heard it runs pretty good for all things considered. And uh, if you consider it just a Bethesda game, you might enjoy it. I have if seen, you lower your expectations. I have seen like, uh, it has an 86 on Metacritic right now. And there are some... That's not bad. There are, yeah, that's pretty good. There are some review sites giving it like really high scores, like nines and tens. So I, I think that, it was just hyped up so much that yeah. it's out and now people are managing expectations. I think because like the big name review sites, IGN, GameSpot, uh, Polygon, they're giving it less than seller reviews. Yeah, IG, was, IGN kind of well, gave it pretty They dirty. gave it a seven. Well, that I'll put a pin in that. Like th they're giving it like less than stellar reviews. And I think that's like shocking people because like if they're giving them lower scores than like how good is this game really yeah the whole like ign like they say like in the icon for the score it says seven is a good game but the problem is and you know they're partially to blame for this the seven has become stigmatized as bad yeah because that's usually as low as they will go for triple a studios yeah it's hard to take a score out of 100 and not equate it to uh like a test score yeah like an a b or c and a b is average yeah but that's not the case in like an ign score 50 right. is average right and, and but no game gets a 50 yeah you know um, but there was that video that went viral a few weeks ago where uh, the ign employee said that we only review games that we think are going to be good mm -hmm. and, or we only review games that we think are going to be popular and those games usually happen to be pretty good Right. So we end up giving them a pretty good score most of the time. And that does make sense. They yeah. got flamed for that, but like honestly, yeah. Like yeah. they're like I mean, these days I value my time a lot. I'm gonna wanna play games that I'm gonna like. I'm not gonna wanna play games that I'm not gonna like. Yeah. So most of the time I'm playing some pretty good fucking games, you know? Yeah. And if a game doesn't look good to me, I'm out. I, I play it for like a second and I'm like, never mind. This is, I yeah. gotta I gotta pull the ripcord on this. So, anyway. Any streams or videos you are excited for coming up? I got so much shit to do. <laughs> I have I have so much shit. And I'm, go I'm going away for like two weeks. So, yeah. I, I, I'm just getting ready for that. Do you plan on trying Starfield? I will. Sh I think I'm going to stream it tomorrow night. And I'll try it there. But, supposedly it takes like a really long time to get anything going in yeah. the game. So... I really don't like expect to playing do too for a while. Much. Yeah, I don't expect to do too much tomorrow night. Uh, that's it. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden. If you can't make chill for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. So you can go check us out over there on demand wherever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also on audio podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, wherever you get your audio podcast from but no matter where you get this show from folks please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on all those respective stores platforms god platforms whatever you can't do what i do <laughs>
You can't do this. I don't know why. I, we got... I was trying to turn on your camera, and it just didn't want to do it. <laughs> uh, I'll be on tomorrow, hopefully, for Starfield. Yay. Yay. I don't know how I'm going to play it. I'm going to try to do it on my computer, but I don't know. You know what? Maybe I shouldn't. Mm -hmm. I think I'll just hook up the Series X and just do it that way. Uh, hopefully, my save will work between PC and Xbox, right? Why wouldn't it? Thank you very much. Uh, Wood streaming, right? I don't know. He's been streaming for like two hours lately. <laughs> He's doing unban requests oh no what oh, a horrible boy. idea <laughs> uh i'll see you on wednesday thanks for being here goodbye bye